I got a call from one of our weapons experts, Ron, who has a shooting range out here in the desert. He has a friend who has a 20 millimeter Japanese auto cannon that was used on the attack at Pearl Harbor that he's looking to sell. It doesn't work, so we're not gonna be able to fire it, but what's a trip to the range without blowing something up? Luckily, Ron's got another treat in store for us. Ron, how's it going? Good, Rick, how's it going? Life is good. All right, well, I got the gentleman over there with an automatic cannon. Um, it's all set up. I'll let you guys discuss it. I'll be setting up some cool stuff for you, okay? Okay. All right? All right, cool, man. Yep, see you in a little bit. All right. You must be Warren. Yes, sir, I am. I'm Rick. I'm Corey. And this is the big gun. Well, it's uh, bigger than some. <laughs> I have a uh, World War II Japanese aircraft machine gun that was taken out of an airplane used on the December 7th Pearl Harbor attack. I'm looking at selling the weapon because it's something that should be on display for the public. I'd like to get $10,000 for the weapon. So exactly what is this? This is a World War II Japanese aircraft cannon, type 99, 20 millimeter. And this was bolted on a Japanese Zero? In the wing of a Japanese Zero. During the attack on Pearl Harbor, this was in a plane that made a crash landing at Hospital Point, right at the entrance to Pearl Harbor. A young man who was about nine at that time asked his dad to drag this into the house for him. A nine-year-old boy got his dad to drag it out of the harbor. That's correct. My uh, dad never would have let me have anything like this at nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> Where in the world did you find something like this? In 1971, when I was building a U.S. Army museum in Hawaii, I asked him if I could acquire it for the uh, museum, and uh, I've had it ever since. It's super cool. Um, how many zeros were shot down? Only about six or seven out of 360, maybe. And I imagine most of those weren't recoverable anyway, right? That's correct, sir. And it's in great shape. Doesn't even look like there's any restoration done. No, this was the way it was taken out of the plane. It's got some serious history to it. And you're looking to sell it? If you make me a reasonable offer. How much did you want for it? Rick, I want $10,000 for it. All right, so Ron's playing in a tank or something around here. I don't know exactly where he's at, but let me go find Ron and be right back. OK. That is really, I mean, like, from Pearl Harbor, from a Japanese Zero, that's absolutely amazing. So, Ron, you ever seen one of these before? I've seen something similar that was German, but nothing from Japanese, and especially something from Pearl Harbor. Probably not more than a handful of these that still exist. No, not even a handful. I've looked around for them before when he brought it in, and uh, I was impressed, the condition, the history on it. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Uh, so what do you know about it? We looked up the uh, through the tax paperwork, and the story checks out. It's got the Japanese markings, the dates, codes, everything matches in what he says it is. So is the barrel cut or anything like that? The barrel's plugged. Uh, back in the day, that's what they did by uh, welding up the barrels. And again, the ammunition is just not available for it. So it's not something you can turn around so and fire. It's completely for display. Yes, sir, for display only. I mean, is, is it collectible? Is it something somebody's going to buy? I mean, I'm, I hate to downplay it, but it looks like I'm looking at an inert paperweight. No, I, I hear what you're saying. But the fact is that it, it's from Pearl Harbor, and the people do collect this stuff, and I think it has a higher value that it doesn't function, in my opinion, increases the value, because anybody can buy it where it's not restricted. So what do you think it's worth? In the condition it's in, the completeness, I would value it about $20,000. OK, I see that. OK, I'll let you guys negotiate here, but I got something really cool and exciting up on the top of the mountain for you. So when you guys are done, meet me up on top, OK? Is it going to be really loud? Really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, will you take 12000 for it? No, now that I know it's worth twenty. dollars uh, my bottom all-counter offer is 15000 you take 14000 No, Rick, I'm going to, that's my very bottom, 15000 Um, well, I guess I'll pay you 15000 then. Thank you. We have a deal. We got, we got a deal. So uh, if you can get Ron to help you out get this down to the pawn shop, we'll do some paperwork, I'll get you paid. OK. All right, um, I'll see you today or tomorrow. Cool. I wonder what Ron has for us to shoot. I have no idea. It's always something fun. Man. Something fun and loud. So this looks interesting. 
Hey, Ron. Hey, Rick. So what is this jewel? It's a M61A1 Vulcan. It's a 20 millimeter auto cannon. OK, so it's a 20 millimeter cannon, too. Yes, sir. Except this one's a lot faster, and it works. This thing isn't for sale, right? No. <laughs> you want to get up on top? Take it for a spin. Just get up there and press the button, right? That's all you have to do. It's real easy. <laughs> Climb on up, and these boys will get you squared away. All right. Here we go, guys. That was really cool. Really short, though. So how many rounds was that? That was 50 rounds. It seemed like three seconds. No, it was about two and a half seconds. <laughs> Did you hit anything? Oh, I, I destroyed this truck. I mean, they aimed it for you. No, 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 I aimed it. Instead of calling me Rick or Dad, just call me the marksman. I'll get right on that. <laughs>